to Rockin' Country Radio, today's hottest country and more. Well, good evening and welcome to another edition of Rockin' Country Radio. This is the Friday Eve edition, I must tell you. And uh, we are so excited because uh, not only is it Friday Eve for all of us, um, especially uh, the working crowd who are anxiously awaiting the weekend, but uh, I am broadcasting live from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina tonight. Yes, I am down here at the beach enjoying the beach, and I tell you, the weather is great, and uh, I was just looking at weather back home. Why am I doing that on vacation? I don't know, but um, they're having storms, and it's just absolutely gorgeous here, so uh, for all my North Carolina listeners who are dealing with that right now, I'm not trying to rub it in. I'm just uh, letting you know it's beautiful at the beach. Come on down. So uh, I hope that you've had a wonderful week. I hope that your day has been fabulous and that your weekend is upon you, and you are looking forward to a great one. And uh, what a way to end our week here on Rockin' Country Radio. We have an awesome guest tonight. Um, and this is an interview that I have been really stoked about ever since I, you know, I found out our, my staff had it all lined up because um, she is an absolute phenomenal singer-songwriter. She is soon going to be a household name. She has a great career in country music ahead of her. And uh, and who knew? Because she is just another great example of what YouTube can do for someone and their immense talent. And um, she, as I understand it, and we will talk with her, but as I understand it, she was kind of discovered on YouTube, and things have kind of taken off for her ever since and have been crazy, crazy busy for her. Um, and let me give you a little bit of background. She has been singing pretty much her whole life, um, and in the midst of it all, she's been able to do some incredible things, uh, from singing with Reba and Chris Christopherson to even Muhammad Ali. She's open for Brad Paisley, Leanne Womack, and Lee Bryce. Um, she has taken part in photo and video shoots with artists such as the band, Rascal Flats, Josh Turner, Lee Gilbert. Oh, my gosh, to give anything to have a photo shoot with him. How lucky is that? Randy Hauser and Billy Currington. And she has been endorsed by McPherson Guitars back in 2011. And she's got a brand new EP out called This Side of Town, which just dropped um, not even two weeks ago. And has been doing some uh, singing on the road with, with Thompson Square. So we are just so, so excited to welcome to our show tonight, Daisy Mallory. Hello, Daisy. Hello, how are you? I am wonderful. How are you? I'm doing great. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us this evening. You have had an incredibly busy schedule, so to give us any of your time is is just an honor and a privilege for us. Oh, my gosh. No worries. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, you are very welcome. Um, Well, first of all, I want to congratulate you on the early success of This Side of Town. Um, Thank you. We we were so lucky to get a copy of that, and I must tell you, it is an awesome EP, and uh, it it is just unbelievable how talented you are, and it really shines through on this EP. And so, congratulations because this is this is huge. Thank you so so much. I had a blast making it. So uh, I've been waiting. I've been counting down the days to release it. So now that it's released, uh, it's it's pretty exciting. Oh, yeah, I imagine the anticipation was just building, you know, up to, what was it, July 11th when it did come out? Yes. Oh, gosh. Yes. Yeah, well, we've been working on it since, uh, I guess, January. So um, it doesn't seem like it's it, – we've been working on it, uh, like, too long, but we were in studio every day. So by the time it was done and we still had a few months before it was released, it was it felt like forever. <laughs> I bet so. Well, Daisy, I have to tell you – um. You know, like so many people out there, I have had the privilege of, you know, going to YouTube and seeing a lot of your videos and just, gosh, when I first saw you out there, I was like, oh my gosh, number one, 
you definitely needed to be signed to a major record label. I was like, this girl is too <laughs> talented to be sitting here making videos on YouTube. But for you, was that kind of where things got started and, I mean, really ramped up to where you were able to kind of just push your, your musical talent and your your dreams really forward? It was definitely uh, fuel to the fire. Um, I'm not a huge uh, YouTube poster. Um, I just will randomly, I'll just post covers whenever I feel inclined to. And, um, you know, I've had cool um, things happen from them, whether or not it's a, a blog, you know, finds it and puts it on, on their website and they share it with their fans. And um, I get fans that way. And uh, just recently Thompson Square found um, one of my uh, YouTube videos and, it was just a video that I recorded, and I, you know, it's actually for my parents. I loved the song, and they were in Arizona packing up our house, and I was here in Tennessee, and um, I sent them the link, and you know, I didn't think anything of it. I just had it on my YouTube channel, and a year later, uh, they they found it. So uh, you just never know, but it, I mean, it definitely adds fuel to the fire and gets me amped up to just keep on going. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I'm glad you shared that. Thank you, by the way, because I had read that, you know, Thompson Square just kind of came upon you, and they were kind of as blown away as I was and probably the next person when they heard your music and saw you performing. And uh, and you've been doing a little bit of touring on the road with them this summer, have you not? Yeah, we did a show um, beginning of June. Um, actually, it was right before, um, actually during CMA Fest. And uh, it was in Oklahoma, um, and uh, it was a blast. It was so much fun. Um, that's the that's the only show I've done with them um, so far. Maybe maybe there might be more, but uh, it was a blast. They are so sweet and so encouraging. Well, you know what? Great. I mean, I don't know if it comes any greater than to be able to um, perform with someone like that because they are such an incredible talent singer songwriters um they know their craft well and it seems like every song that they put out is just a hit um it just goes to number one people love them you know and yeah so who better to learn from you know the ropes of of the road and and what it takes to to put on a big show like you know what goes on at cma fest wow what an experience absolutely absolutely yeah they're they're such hard workers and they they have just worked their booties off for a really really long time um before they even made it so it's just their their story is really inspiring oh yeah definitely well i have to talk to you because in the opening uh remarks i uh as i was given the rundown on you you have had some amazing experiences as a singer and a performer to perform you know with some of the best in the biz um, and to be around some of the best in the biz. I mean, everyone from Reba to Brad Paisley to Josh Turner, Brantley Gilbert, and, uh, I mean, the list goes on and on. And talk a little bit about how some of that transpired for you. You know, um, relationships in Nashville, um, you know, friends, and um, just it's so crazy how organically, how just different things can, out-of-box things can just happen um, just by, you know, networking in this town and, um, you know, as far as, like, the uh, opening for acts, you know, I'll meet someone that knows someone that books, you know, festivals and they'll put me uh, on, an, uh, you know, on the book for before, like, a big act. And then uh, as far as video shoots, um, my modeling agency is really awesome. They know that music is first for me, but they always, you know, will contact me if they if there's a spot in a music video that they want me to just kind of be in. So it's just, it's all really, really fun, and it's just all networking and just, you know, I just, I try and get out there as much as I possibly can. Well, you know, you're definitely in the right place for all of that to take place. I mean, gosh, I don't know that there's a better place in all of the U.S., than Nashville to network, you know, outside of the social media realm, um, you know, just to be able to go there because the thing that I love about country music and the artists is that, you know, everybody, no matter how big they are, they're more than willing to help those who are aspiring to be where they are. And, um, yeah. you know, it, it is the camaraderie is just unbelievable the way, you know, you've got a lot of artists that are, you know, not only songwriting and collaborating in that way, but they're they're singing on each other's albums now, and you're seeing more of that evolve, which I think is is just you know incredible in itself that um, that that is taking place because it's really opening doors like for artists like you who are going to be the next great thing in country <laughs> music, in my opinion. Um, 
So, and, uh, well, I tell you, it's no surprise as a model because every picture that I've seen of you is stunning. And uh, oh I have to ask, though, this is kind of a fun question, but how many times a day do you get a compliment or a question about or, you know, something to the effect about your hair? Because your <laughs> hair is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. Um I, I, you know, I do get a lot of comments, um, and I think it's just the length and, um, of course, you know, red hair. Uh, where I grew up in Arizona, it was really rare. There was there was no redheads. Um, you know, I can count on one hand the amount of uh, friends I had that had red hair. Out here in Nashville, there are a ton of redheads. I was at Target the first year I moved here, and there was a family of redheads walking in, and I was like, oh, my Lord. <laughs> it's just like they all moved here. I don't know, but um, I do I do get comments on it. it, it they're really sweet. Oh, well, that is – well, your hair is gorgeous. And my even my daughter, my 16-year-old daughter, was like – she saw your picture, and as I was preparing for this, and she goes, "Mom, I want her hair," and uh, because she's one of these that's trying desperately to let her hair get long, and so anytime she see, her best friend has long hair like you, and she's just like, "Uh, you know what I would give." And um, so having long hair myself, I try to tell her, you know, you don't understand all the work that goes into it. It's 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 really it's 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 a lot more to it than it looks, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I have to ask you now. You you worked on this album, This Side of Town, which of course um, I think it's been a real labor of love. It, it tends to shine through on the album. But um, as far as the album goes, what has been some of your biggest inspirations behind this project? You know, um, growing up, I had um, just an eclectic amount of inspirations. I grew up listening to everything from Judds to Thirty Eight Special to Celine Dion. So I was all over the board. But for this um, EP, I um, I really took to what kind of started me in music. And I loved Michelle Branch, and I loved Alison Krauss, and um, Patty Griffin. I listened to her Flame and Red album. Gosh, um, when we started recording this EP, I had Flame and Red in my car. Like every day, I would just blast Patty Griffin. And so she was actually a huge inspiration for this EP, uh, just because I love her stuff, and uh, you know, I grew up listening to her and Michelle Branch and Allison Krauss, and uh, so it's just kind of a mesh of everything. But uh, Patty Griffin definitely inspired this EP. Well, I I have to tell you though, some of those musical inspirations that you have in general are just in themselves are just awesome. And um, but I love how you've kind of taken bits and pieces of some of your favorites in music and have kind of worked it into this EP to where it, it's yours and it's original. But um, it's just really neat because um, I think any time you can draw inspiration from other artists to to kind of build on what you're trying to do as an artist, it, it is always a, a positive thing. And Absolutely. as far as the EP, you know, as far as the EP is going, what kind of feedback are you getting from fans and, and radio personnel um, on the album? I think everyone's just really happy that I've finally released music because it's been so long. So mm -hmm. I know that my fans have been kind of waiting and just kind of waiting in the shadows, just, you know, when is she going to release something new? So um, I think that's been pretty exciting for me to, to watch and um, you know, the day that it was released, I, uh, I stayed up till midnight. I was by myself, and I, I waited, and uh, I, literally my phone blew up with texts and emails and uh, Twitter notifications, Facebook notifications, and I was just overwhelmed with the amount of support that I got from fans and friends and family. And uh, So that's always, that's always the fun part of releasing uh, music, but this one is definitely special to me. Oh, definitely. And now I have to ask you about Daisy's Crazy. Because, yeah. uh, you know, that is, if I understand that correct, that is like your fan club, correct? Yeah, it is. Well, and and you have fans from pretty much all over the world, right? I do, I do. Um, Daisy's Crazies, uh, I guess we came up with that um, a few years ago now, and I uh, didn't have a name for my fan club. I think it was just called the Daisy Mallory Fan Club, and it just sounded so official and I didn't like the word fan club thing I just I, I don't know I wanted it to be more personable and just fun and uh one of my nicknames growing up was crazy daisy and 
you know, I put out something on Facebook, and I was like, guys, what do you what do you want to be called? Like, what 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 instead of fan club? And and somebody said Daisy's Crazies, and I was like, why didn't I think of that? So we ended up using that, and uh, it just stuck, and it's just you know just a quirky little uh, fan club, and we've done some cool things in the past, and uh, it's just it's it's really cool uh, to see them also um, post about being Daisy's crazy, and um, they'll make you know I've had T-shirts made. Uh, by fans that say, you know, Daisy's crazy, and just, it's so much fun. It's so cool. <laughs> well, and that is such a cool name. I mean, it's a moniker that, that it, you know, totally identifies you and your music, but it, it's it's really, like you say, it's a personal thing for the for the fans who, a real identifier for them, you know, that they can say, hey, I'm a Daisy's crazies kind of thing. And, yeah, um, yeah. That is too cool. Um now, you've been, I mean, like I said, you have been on the road playing some serious shows and um, of late. I mean, you've had a pretty jam-packed summer. Um, talk about some of the shows you've got upcoming. Upcoming. I have um, tons of shows here in Nashville and town, um, uh, a lot of writers' rounds as well. So uh, basically a writers' round is when, you know, songwriters get together and we all just kind of play stuff that we write, and it's an acoustic setting, and it's uh, really intimate and uh I have a few of those coming up. Um, I'm playing for, um, I'm endorsed by McPherson Guitars, and they also make Matthews um, Archery both. Mm -hmm. And I'm a hunter as well. So uh, Matthews puts on a big old um, uh, show in in December, and I'm going to be flying up to Wisconsin and playing um, that big show. So there's probably, I don't know who's going to be there, whether it's going to be a bunch of uh, the sponsored hunters or uh, who's going to be there. It's a big corporate thing. Um, so I'm excited about that, though. I've been wanting to do that for um, a few years. And uh, I've got a couple uh, shows lined up uh, outside of Nashville um, that I haven't set all the details in quite yet, but they're coming up soon. And uh, all all good things, all really exciting things. Uh, definitely so. And uh, on the note of you being a hunter, I mean, who knew? Um, what do you like to hunt? What is your favorite thing to hunt? I uh I've been a big game hunter since uh I was 10. So I um I like, you know, deer hunting and um in Arizona elk hunting was really uh was really big. So uh, it's really rare though to get drawn for elk. Uh you actually it's like a raffle. You have to be your name has to be picked and selected in order for you to go hunt elk. So uh but yeah, just just deer, you know, out here in Nashville, that's really all I do. I I uh, went duck hunting for the first time this past year and that was a blast. It's just something to do, you know, with my dad, and we just, I, you know, I grew up hunting with him, so it's it's all fun. It sounds like it. Now, it's not something I've ever personally done, but I have plenty of friends who are avid hunters, and being in North Carolina, you know, um, it's just rich with lots of different things to hunt. And yeah. But have you ever, you know, being a big game hunter, have you ever, like, gone out to, say, Montana or one of those states where you, you know, the really big deer are and there's other species out there that, you know, people really get into hunting and so forth? I haven't personally had a chance to. My dad has, and he brags about it all the time. And there's pictures around the house of just, like, him, like, uh, horseback riding and, you know, on on a hunt. And uh, so I've heard, like, amazing things, but, no, I have not yet done so. <laughs> See, that's got to get on your list. You've just got to somehow bridge <laughs> hunting and singing together, go play some venues out there, add a few days on to the trip, do a few, a little bit of hunting, and you know it's like the best of both worlds, right? <laughs> right, that sounds perfect. I'm gonna have to do yeah. that. Yeah, see, there you go. Especially for the upcoming show where you're gonna be singing, um, yeah. you know, for that hunters convention. I mean, that's gonna be huge. So, and I'm sure they're looking forward to it, knowing that you're an avid hunter as it is. I think so. I think that's uh, that's that's a good thing. That kind of that kind of helped. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Now, on the EP, the EP you've just released, what is the first single that you are releasing off of that? Actually, right now I'm not um, releasing a single, uh, mm-hmm. surprisingly. We we thought about it, and, um, you know, what I wanted to do was just release this EP because I haven't released music in so long, and, you know, just kind of see where it takes off and see where it goes and um, see what song kind of, everyone's drawn toward and because everyone has a different favorite it seems um i've asked uh you know uh, i think i put out on twitter not that long ago you know what everyone's favorite is and everyone tweeted me a different song so <laughs> it, that, I mean, that's all that's all, it's all good 
Um, so I just kind of want to see uh, where it goes and uh, take it from there. And if we end up doing a single, um, I would absolutely love that because I love doing radio tours. I love hitting the road and, um, you know, playing shows acoustically. And uh, so, you know, whatever happens, happens. So we're just going to take it from here. Well, you know, I think any one of the songs that you picked to release as a single would be a hit because they're all such good songs. And, and you know, and that's one thing I wanted to ask you because I know that when artists are putting together or they're picking songs for their album, um, it can be quite a chore because it really is hard to go through a library almost of songs to pick mm-hmm. You know, if it's an EP, five or six songs. If it's an album, thirteen or twelve, and yeah. it can be quite a chore. Um, for you, was was that part difficult, or did you just know what songs you wanted to be on the CP? It was actually uh, a little bit of both. It, it was uh, the first time I ever sat down, um, and my producer is awesome. He's so great, and it was the first time I ever sat down for an EP with my producer and, and we went through um, my whole catalog of songs. You know, I think I put together maybe 15 or 20 songs that I thought could go on the album. And so um, we just kind of worked through those and, you know, narrowed it down to, you know, 10 to 12. And uh, we also, I, I told him that I wanted to cut someone else's song. So that way, you know, uh, people in the business know that, you know, I don't always want to write all my songs, you know, because a good song is a good song no matter where it came from. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, I wanted to uh, open that door, and so we looked through um, uh, other people's catalogs, uh, just amazing songwriters in town, and um, uh, Troy, my producer, actually sent me a song one night, and he was like, hey, I found this, you know, does this is this something that you'd want to sing? And um, I had never, I've never, like, picked someone else's song to sing before, so it was all very new, but I, I, I was looking for something that would just kind of turn my head, and, and he sent me this song, and it was actually one that, he wrote with um, an artist, Kelly Bannon, and uh, that's the first song on the EP, Never Ever Coming Down. Um, and then the rest I, uh, I wrote. But it was it was a process. It was really it was a really fun process, though. Yeah, I mean, and I'm sure on the backside of it, now that it's done and and you have all the songs picked and the EP is out, it's it's just like at some point I know you had to just breathe that sigh of relief, going, you know. <laughs> The songs, the song selection process is done, and we're well on our way now. You know, that's kind of half the battle yes. one, I think, when you're picking the songs. Because especially, you know, if you really want to, you know, appeal to the masses and put out some really good stuff. And, and that, you know, I don't know that there's any more pressure an artist has on themselves than trying to pick the perfect selection of songs to go on an album or EP. That, to me, is, I think there's more pressure there. If I were an artist, that would be more pressure because I'm such a perfectionist than if I was out there about to go on stage, you know, perform. Um, You know, performing should be the fun part, which, by the way, for you personally, which aspect of all of this do you enjoy the most? Because you're a phenomenal songwriter, obviously, and you have a beautiful voice, but you know, to get out there and perform. I mean, what part of this do you enjoy the most? I love it all. I really do. There's so many different parts of, um, you know, the music business and what I do. And there's the songwriting, and um, I love walking into a room and getting a cup of coffee with my co-writers and sitting down and and writing something from scratch or from something we're going through. And and then I love uh, going to uh, a studio session and uh, singing a song I just wrote or, um, you know, performing. Like, I I love it all. I really, really do. Well, that's good. And, well, I tell you, Daisy, I I really am excited for you because – um, like I said, the first time I, I heard you and saw you on YouTube, which is where I actually discovered you and came across you, um, I was just blown away. I was like, why is this girl not already on a major record label? And, you know, I've interviewed a lot of independent artists and, you know, and over the career of the shows. And I'm always saying this because there's so much untapped talent and I am just so excited that you are getting the breaks that you deserve and uh, it is going to be interesting to see what happens for you moving forward I mean I expect to see you you know on the big country music award shows down the road very soon (laughs) well thank you so 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 much 
Well, you are very welcome. Well, anything that we can do for you here to help promote your music, of course we will continue to play it and feature it on our weekly show, and we also have it in rotation on our radio station. But if there's anything we can do for you, please let us know, because we definitely love to. We're huge fans of yours, and uh, we just wish you all the best for much continued success as you go forward. Thank you so much. That means a lot to me. Well, you are welcome. You're welcome back any time. And please keep us posted on things that are coming up because we will be happy to uh, promote that out for for um, our to our listeners and our fans and uh, and get the word out to try to help you be heard. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you are welcome. Well, enjoy your your evening and your weekend, and uh, we hope to see you out on the road very soon. Perfect. Sounds great. Thank you so much, and have a great weekend. You do the same. Take care. All right. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Ah, what a what a sweetheart, Daisy Mallory, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, I tell you, she is. Um, if you do not know who she is, I encourage you when when this wraps, go to YouTube, just type in Daisy Mallory, watch her videos. You will be amazed at how her voice sounds. In a few moments, we're going to play a few cuts from her latest EP, brand new, this side of town. And uh, I tell you. It is one you'll want for your collection, and it's available on iTunes now. It just dropped just less than three weeks ago, Um, so it's really brand new, and it is really getting some rave reviews. I know we've gotten some tremendous feedback on it here, Um, but before we launch into the songs, I want to give you some information where you can find Daisy online. You can visit her website at daisymallory.com. You can also um, go to Twitter. She's Daisy Mallory on Twitter, and on Facebook as well, Daisy Mallory Music on Facebook, correction there, Um, but go and like her Facebook page, follow her on Twitter, that is the best way to keep up with her and all that's going on with her, Um, she is just a phenomenal artist, and I tell you, she's immensely talented, and when you get the attention of someone like Thompson Square, and uh, she's had the opportunity that she has to, you know, be in videos of various major country music artists. She's been able to perform with, you know, country's royalty, in my opinion. I mean, it doesn't get any bigger than Reba and Chris Christopherson. I mean, she's got some great doors opening for her. And so she is going to be a household name. You can rest assured on that. So uh, we want to thank Daisy Mallory for being our special guest this evening. And many thanks to all of you for tuning in and joining us. And if you're brand new to our show, wow, you picked a great night to tune in because um, this is an interview that we have been excited about from the the very moment we knew we had it booked. So thank you for being with us as well. So as we close our show tonight, we're going to play three cuts off of her brand new EP, This Side of Town. Um, And we will play Never Ever Coming Down, followed by I Remember Everything. And then we will close with the title cut, This Side of Town. Daisy Mallory and... uh, To everyone out there, thank you so much again. Wishing you all a wonderful evening and a great weekend. And we'll be back here on Monday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, same time, same place, with another great indie artist. Take care. Have a great evening, and we'll see you soon. God bless, and good night.
Rockin' Country Radio on the web. Find us at rockincountryradio.com, on Twitter at rockin' underscore C-T-R-Y, and on Facebook at Rockin' Country Radio. 